Rod Stewart played, paid tribute to him. Um, as yeah. A Living Color, they paid, uh, they played the Sinead, of, well, I guess it's the Prince song, Nothing Compares to You. Mm-hmm. You know that show, uh, Super Size Me? Uh, yeah, the documentary. I'm, I think I'm gonna make a documentary. Super Show Me. <laughs> Thir- Thirty days of concerts. What will this do to my body? That would be funny. Yeah. Year they were formed. And even a chance of rain. From the Cairo 7 Pinpoint Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist. Let's go. We'll be out in the fair today out in the rain. Hope you brought a jacket. Nice. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, I was I was really into them in high school. They had an album called Jed that was really good. And then they went and changed the sound completely and got successful. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that happens. Yeah. The Goo Goo Dolls? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they used to be like more punk rock and then we tamed it. Kind of, now they're uh, kind of mellow. A little bit bland. <laughs> Mainstream. They still had a few good tunes. I found a ticket for 37 bucks. I'm like, nice. That's not bad. I'll try to get you that edit, uh, the raw edit of your show, too, at some point. Cool. Yeah. A little overwhelmed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no worries. 100, 124 shows in now? Oh, for sure. Just that one little song that didn't make it to the final cut. I was like, oh, did we... <laughs> screw that up or what <laughs> there's a guy that kept getting in your way too oh yeah that weirdo yeah all right but at least he was enthusiastic he was he was fanatic <laughs> <laughs> all right i think we're good to go okay Ladies and gentlemen, guys and dolls, cats and chicks, you're listening to Viva ENT, Rock, Pop, and Soul. We are live in the studio. Uh, I am Devin, the extreme dude. And uh... Hey, extreme dudes! Why are you so extreme? Well, uh, about living uh, color and extreme at Showbox Market and... That's, that's pretty extreme. <laughs> and I'm here in the studio with the one and only Do Train. <laughs> I 
Thank you, guys. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. And the greatest producer of all time. Hey, it's Eric. CC Rider! And uh, not all with us today is Johnny, because he is busy at the shores, jamming out, as always. With the bad boys. With the Johnny and the bad boys. <laughs> and uh, we have a great show for you, uh, everyone. Uh, we're talking about the band. Not just any old band, the band. The band. Uh, in honor of uh, Robbie Robinson, uh, who's uh, left, left the uh, physical world. But Rest he, in peace. But uh, he still remains on... Uh, the Last Waltz, which yeah. highly recommend everyone go out and watch. It's free with ads on Tubi. so And it's a great watch. Yeah. There's tons of famous people. Even if you just listen to the audio, it's just incredible performances. You can find clips on YouTube as well. So, Absolutely. Well, we are uh, on the seventh day of show timber. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, do, the, so there's a, so a super size, uh, size me documentary about eating McDonald's every day. I'm trying to make a, a documentary about me going to a concert or working a show every day of the month of September. And if you can actually make that happen, that will be truly incredible. Well, on top of uh, trying to... Uh, so you can get the licensing rights <laughs> exactly. for all, all that music. My, I will doff my cap. Well, there you go. That would be a feat never achieved by man before. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm like 128 concerts in to my uh, world record goal as well for the Guinness Book of World Records. So. Yeah. And um, I'm making sure I'm taking selfies this time and, and really documenting that I was there at for, Every for, one of those shows. And the Beach Boys was incredible last month. Yeah, the Beach Boys was incredible. That's uh, highlights are le <laughs> legends. And oh. they still had the, the good voices. Yeah, they, they do. They actually really had the good voices still. They've, they've been playing since the, like, the 1963 for some of those songs, six decades later, and they still wow. sound like the, uh, the record. Yeah. Fantastic. Incredible. And John Bolton, our local drummer. Yep, from the uh, Herding Cats. Uh, was uh, Brought the thunder. Yeah, he did bring the thunder. And they had some great um, graphics that they had made up for John Bolton, the bolt. Um, lightning <laughs> bolts coming yeah, with down. lightning bolts and yeah. stuff. And not former UN ambassador John Bolton. No. No. <laughs> okay. Not him. <laughs> this guy stands up when he drums. Yeah, this, this guy... And actually, uh, I don't know if you noticed in the footage, but near the end of the show, he tried to put on one of his Muppet hats and it wouldn't stay on, so he flung it aside pretty quickly. But um, he's pretty silly, but he's he's really good. And, yeah, he had those uh, old Beach Boys on their toes, that's for sure. <laughs> he was also part of George Fest, which is coming back again in October. So uh, that's, that's going to be a fun show. Yeah, he loves the Beatles. And uh, and he's a great map. It's George Fest. That's the uh, festival in Georgetown in Seattle. It's actually going to be. Uh, it's about George George Harrison, George Harrison Fest. Fest. Oh, okay. And that's going to be uh, at the Triple Door. Uh, but that's uh, the same night at Guns and Roses. So I I don't know if I'm going to make it, but yeah, um, doesn't I've, look like it. To develop clone technology before then, <laughs> I'm going to deploy one of my clones there. So we'll talk to Dolly the sheep about that. Well. <laughs> We need a Dolly Parton clone too. But that's a, there you go. Oh, and speaking of which, who's of course, in Guns N' Roses these days? By the way, well, Slash, Slash, he's Slash back is, in. Yeah, and, and, I'm pretty sure Axl Axel Rose, Rose is back yeah. in. Well, sure. Well, Axel's been the the one mainstay, but yeah. they've had so many lineup changes. There was like 20 years where it was Buckethead, and then uh, he was the guitar player. And then right. I guess Slash got back involved and. Is he Stradlin, you know, uh, Seattle guy? Is he back um, in the band? You know, I would, anything at all? I would think so, uh -huh. but yeah, that one I'm not sure of. But yeah, okay. I did, that's right. He is a local guy. I do remember that now. And possibly, I've heard of rumors of Allison Chains opening up for them. Like, yeah, actually, that rumor is, I think, has been. Um, is that debunked? Yeah, it's been debunked. Um, they, they, it's not on their website. I actually a guy. They would have. They would have put that on the ticket already. I feel. Yeah, like, and, that's and, a big and they're name. scheduled to be somewhere else. I think maybe even that night. Okay, so. well, uh, put some kibosh on that. Well, yeah. September, so many great shows. Uh, last yeah, night. Last night was Tommy Two Tone, Rick yes. Springfield, eight six seven five three zero nine, and the Hooters. You know, Jesse's girl. Yeah, yeah, and Rick Springfield. So that was really awesome. 
and then tomorrow we're going to go see Kansas. Yep, and oh. tonight I'm seeing 50 Cent, uh, and happy birthday to my wife, uh, Lita. That's right, happy birthday, Lita. Yeah, uh, that's our uh, her birthday show. We're going to the Climate Pledge and, uh, with Busta Rhymes. It's going to be nice. awesome. Yeah. Started off the month with Chicago at the fair, yep, and yep. then uh, Goo Goo Dolls at the winery, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, coming up. I'm seeing Action Buddy on the September 9th. That's uh, my friend's band. Uh, that is, I think, George Fest, Georgetown or Columbia City Fest or something. <laughs> uh, and then the 10th, John Oliver is at Paramount Theater. I'll be there that night. Very cool. 11th, uh, Lionel, Lionel Richie, Richie Earth, Wind & Fire. Earth, Wind & Fire on the 11th. Yep. Uh, 14th, Beyonce. And then 15th, Steve Miller. Steve Miller Band. And then 16th, Counting Crows. <laughs> and then 17th, Denji Fever at the Madame Lou's. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeff Lombardi. He's been on the show before. Got me free tickets to that. Uh, 20th is Coldplay. Coldplay. 22nd, uh, Arctic Monkeys. And then to finish off the month, uh, is, do, is Sting coming? Yeah, Sting is coming with Joe Subner uh, the 27th of September at Climate Pledge. So. It is a full month. Yeah. Uh, I hope. And the new iPhone's coming out this month as well, the 15 Pro That's Max. Right. So uh, we're going to find out details on September 12th uh, what, what Apple's going to bring to the table. Yeah, the specs and everything. Because the 14 Pro Max has changed my life, I feel. It's, I mean, every, every of these, all these devices have... Taken you to a new 4K level. Yeah. Wow. Especially uh, Living Color, uh, that footage at the show box. I'm in, like, kind of a close proximity. It, it just looks really... Crisp. Yeah. But back in the day, Martin Scorsese had the same idea of, we got to document these bands. Yeah. And so that's why he made the movie The Last Waltz. Yeah, he, he's he, like, we got to document this band. This yeah, band, this particular band. band. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they bring on at the end, they got uh, that movie stars Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Joan Baez, Ringo Starr, who we saw. Yeah, Emmy Lou Harris. Uh, oh, Neil Diamond, who uh, you had. Neil Young, yeah, uh, Neil, Neil Diamond. Neil yeah. Diamond. Um, Muddy yeah. Waters. I saw Buddy Guy. Buddy played, Guy. Played some Muddy Waters songs. Yeah. Anyway, um, that was a great show. Great, great show. And, you know, obviously uh, having Martin Scorsese document it all and and put it all together, just uh, uh, absolutely awesome. And uh, Rod Stewart, when he played with Cheap Trick, uh, played a, the Ro a Robbie Robinson song. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, if we, you know, we're going to talk about that for a sec, then, yeah, yeah, we saw, I'm wearing the actual Rod Stewart shirt uh, from that show, and uh, it, they ended up uh, throwing the song Broken Arrow by Robbie Robertson into the set list sort of after the fact, after he passed, uh, because he was one of the people who had actually done, like, an actual official album version, uh, cover, recording of it, um, on one of his Rod Stewart albums. Um, and the funny thing is, is that I've, I've seen two different bands now do that song, uh, but never seen Robbie himself do it. Um, of course, uh, the Grateful Dead used to play that song for a few years, and uh, bass player Phil Lesh would, would sing, and so I saw that one down in Eugene in 93. Uh, but great tribute by Rod to uh, Robbie Robertson playing Broken Arrow during the show here in Seattle. Definitely. And uh, I've been seeing a bunch of the great tribute bands lately, uh, like Fat Saturn, and uh, there's been um, some other tributes to the, these artists. Like sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah out. No, that's as it should be. <laughs> so starting, uh, the, the, the band is a Canadian-American rock band. that they, they, they started off in Toronto, Ontario, 1967. The year I was born. <laughs> wow. With Garth Hudson on the keyboards and... Rick Danko on the, the guitar and vocals, and uh, Richard Manuel and Robbie Robertson playing guitar, songwriting, and the vocals. And American uh, Levon Helm was on the drums as well. They, they all uh, collaborated. Yeah. And they uh, some of their music influenced musicians like George Harrison, Alton John, Grateful Dead, Eric Clapton, Wilco. Yeah. Well, so they left their impact. Yeah, and they were the backup true. band for Bob Dylan. Yeah, which, we which saw of last course, year, propelled right? them to another level of success and stardom at that particular time when that sort of got put together. 
Yeah, yeah 1966 concert tour was uh, uh, <laughs> featuring the band, and it was Dylan's first with an electric band. So, you know, they were there when people were yelling out, Judas! Yeah, <laughs> to just, Bob Dylan, because he was using electric guitars. I just looked that up, that's funny, the Judas guitar. comment. Right. <laughs> some some hardcore <laughs> folk people. You don't yeah, want to make yeah. that, I guess. <laughs> well, there, there's a funny. Um, there's, I, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie "I'm Not There," which is the movie about the se sort of seven different depictions of um, uh, Bob Dylan during different sort of periods of his with, life. With Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, right? yeah and, I'm aware of it, but I haven't seen it. Heath Ledger yeah. and and um, Richard Gere and Kate Blanchett even does one, and and that's what I was going to say. It, she plays the Bob Dylan during the era when they went to Newport and did the uh, yeah. electric <laughs> and uh, people yelling and screaming stuff at her on stage. Um, yeah, but uh, a great, uh, you know, a historic moment for him, of course. And Joaquin Phoenix, it was about that, that time at, uh, went on Dave Letterman and was acting all weird. <laughs> it might have been. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, I mean, uh, you could pretty much say any day of his life, <laughs> whether he was on Letterman or not, he was acting weird. Have you seen the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix? I haven't. Okay, well, it's about him and his device, and that came out 2014, but it's it was prolific. Like, I feel like I, I might go to these concerts alone, but if I'm with my device, I'm never alone. Like, it's, it's, it's weird. Well, Big Brother it, it, is watching, well, as that uh, too, George but, Orwell said. But the AI is getting, uh, oh, of course. It's changing the world the robots by the day. and the AI and all the stuff. I was working a Penny Arcade Expo at the uh, convention center, and I'm seeing all the state-of-the-art PCs and Alienware. And they're, they're, coming, they're publishing a lot out there. Yeah, yeah. But um, they didn't have any of that back when Martin Scorsese was making this, he did it all on film. Yeah. <laughs> Old school film. Yeah, 1976. Something uh, not too much uh, digital video. No, it's about going around. Around. Little to none, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember what I was doing that year. <laughs> but I wasn't watching that movie yet, unfortunately. 76? What, oh, what were you doing? Nine years old. Yeah, I was in Indiana. I remember seeing the 4th of July fireworks, the bicentennial fireworks down there at the park in Evansville, Indiana, when I was nine. Awesome, yeah. But yeah, that I mean, seventy six. What a you know, what an interesting time that was. Anyway, because you know, is there sort of ushering out a little bit of the rock era? You know, of course, a lot of disco and stuff is starting to filter in uh, to the bigger picture. Um, so you know, almost maybe a good time to do the last waltz and you know, say the goodbyes and uh, all that. And then, uh, yeah, like Bob Marley was in the scene around then. They're coming out with a Bob Marley movie uh, in 2024, One Love. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Well, that's interesting. I, I'll probably see that then. Oh, yeah. I'll, we're definitely going to see that in theaters. That's gonna yeah. Be. Uh, I saw Oppenheimer. How was that? Uh, so great, I fell asleep and woke up to a nuclear bomb. But <laughs> Have you seen Oppenheimer yet? Or I did see it. Yeah, I what, enjoyed it. What did you think? I thought it was great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Very, very compelling. I need to watch it again. For real, yeah. So, uh, and Barbie I have not seen, but I heard that's really good. Oh, and the funny thing about Barbie, too, was that, <laughs> as you had mentioned, uh, the Beach Boys, when we went and saw them, at the very, the very, very last song of the show was Fun, Fun, Fun. And uh, they announced, uh, pre-announced the song to everybody. Um, but he also added the note that even though this song had come out in, like, 1963 or something, that... Uh, it it's in the new Barbie movie, he said, and so we're still culturally culturally pertinent today. <laughs> so very funny that you know those old guys still kicking around in soundtracks and stuff. <laughs> and like, like the the last waltz, I think Bob Dylan's still on tour. He's on the Never Ending Tour. Yeah, well, he is on the Never Ending Tour. Yeah, until you know. God rest so, his soul, he passes. How many people are left from the band now? Uh, well, oh, that's a good question. I didn't actually look up uh, to see if any of them had passed. I don't know that any of them have what, passed What shape are they in? <laughs> Do you know the song, The Shape I'm In? The Shape Erica. I'm In. I, you know, I'm not familiar with that one. I, I, when I think of the band, I typically think of the weight. Yes. Yes. As I, uh, although th that wasn't even their biggest hit, but I think it's the one that stood the test of time that people 
site most often or sing along with when they hear it come on the radio. And uh, for those that aren't familiar, let's hear a little bit of The Weight by the band. And part of the reason why it became so popular is because of uh, the movie um, uh, with Peter Fonda. And <laughs> now I'm going to block it out. Easy Rider. Now, this song was released in 1968, and it was the single from the debut album, Music from Big Pink, which I think is still considered their masterpiece and uh, their most Absolutely. popular record. Yeah. And Roger Walters called that album the second most influential record in the history of rock and roll. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And he was pretty influential himself, so that's a pretty high praise. The song is about a visitor's experience in a town mentioned in the lyrics uh, in the first line is Nazareth. Nazareth. Yeah. Yeah. Listed as number 41 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. But yeah, I'm, I'm smelling some bib biblical references in there for sure, like Luke, he just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting that it was used in Easy Rider but not licensed for the soundtrack album. So they uh, the producers commissioned the band Smith to record a cover of the song for the soundtrack. <laughs> And similarly, they had some issues with Woodstock. I uh, read uh, that they were wanting to include some of their stuff in the Woodstock movie, but there were some, you know, uh, legal issues. There's always a Brian Adams happening. or an Eagles out there that gets picky <laughs> that my music is above all others and no other else, no one else can play <laughs> except for me and the record label. Although maybe I should take 10 seconds and just say, Thank you very kindly to the people, the YouTube sheriffs and the people at YouTube for allowing me to get the rest of my channel back. I do truly, honestly appreciate that so much because I didn't want to have to recreate 12 years of work in the next two years. So thank you. Anyway, just uh, wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, I didn't realize you're Indiana Jones. Like, he, uh, you just hop into a fridge when there's a nuclear bomb and survive it, right? <laughs> He, were, he was offline for a couple of days. I was really worried about yeah, that. But. Yeah, it was, it was actually deleted, but it, uh, it's never truly deleted because it's always there on servers and stuff. And so I was able to at least convince them to give me that stuff back. So and that was very no, nice. we're, we're both golden right now. No strikes on either channel. Yeah. We're, we're uh, yeah. in full, full bore. Back to good. So that's good. Well, you know, this song was written by the late, great Robbie Robertson from yeah. the band. And so... Uh, since we mentioned it, I think we should hear the uh, Smith version of The Way. Okay. Yeah. This one from the uh, Easy Rider soundtrack. Yeah. A little different key.
I don't think I've ever heard this version before. It's good though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think they were reinventing the wheel at all with this arrangement, but uh, no. yeah, it works. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is that I'll bet you a lot of people like probably me heard that version and thought it was the band, like maybe an alternate, right. you know, recording or something. When in fact it wasn't. Well, of course, as we've mentioned, the band, uh, uh, you know, very famous and really got the spotlight shined on them by being the backing band for Bob Dylan on tour. But they also appeared on some of his recordings, including this one, Like a Rolling Stone. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix liked to cover this song. And the Rolling Stones listened to that song. It's like, we're going to call them, we're going to call ourselves the Rolling Stones. Yeah, and the <laughs> Rolling Stones actually ended up covering that song eventually, <laughs> which just had to happen, right? Of course. <laughs> How could you not? And the, the origins of the band, they were called the Hawks. Yeah. Earlier, yeah. Before they, yeah. Were, uh, they were yeah, backing rockability singer Ronnie Hawkins. Yeah. Who's in Last Waltz as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, and, taking a look at some of their other significant hits, uh, The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down and Up on Cripple Creek, a, a double A-side single, went to uh, number 10 in Canada. Uh, back in 1969 and number 25 in the U.S. Let's hear a little bit of their version of The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down. Yeah, yeah, which is, of course, about the Civil War. from their second record, self-titled second record, and featuring Levon Helm on the vocals, and another one written by Robbie Robertson. success when Joan Baez covered it and took it all the way to number three in 1971. Oh, can we hear her version? Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's a lot that. different. I mean, it's just kind of the, it's the same song, but her female vocals, no, Joan Baez, yeah, what a legend. She gets it her, you know, touch, which is good. Dixie, 
taxi them. <laughs> Don't taxi them. Robertson definitely had a gift for writing songs that uh, not only sounded, you know, folky and traditional, but just sounded like they'd been around forever, yeah. you know, and, and to think that these, you know, written in the late 60s or, you know, sometimes even the 70s, but just seemed like these must have existed since the dawn of time. The, the 1860s or 70s? Right, right, exactly. Oh, okay. They have that feel like it, it yeah. would have been written in the 1860s. Right. And then, if it was written today, it would be the night the old the Pixies, the, 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 you know, because you know the Pixies are playing tomorrow at Product Village. Oh, I did. Uh, oh, with Modest Mouth. Yes. Yes, that's right. But we're seeing Kansas, so we yeah. can't. Yeah. There's, there's just too many shows. I mean, but uh, talk about that one. Uh, do you have any favorite song of the band, Jared? Oh, um, the other one that you mentioned um, off of that album, um, but it, <laughs> not just towards my memory. Uh, yeah. Up on Cripple Creek. Up on Cripple Creek, yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that one. And um, both of those songs, um, I, I, it's funny, I think Grateful Dead at different times played the three big ones, Up on Cripple Creek, night they drove old Dixie down and the weight. Um, a lot of times the weight was an encore, I believe, for uh, the dead um, when they were doing that one. There's a little bit of up on Purple Creek. It's got that funky beat and that, that twangy sound. Another one written by Robbie Robertson with drummer Levon Helm singing the lead vocal. Yeah. Wow. We seem to have a winning formula. Yeah, so great combination. Yeah, with Robbie, yeah, write the song and uh, Levon do the vocal. Yes. And then in 1973, they, they made the covers album Moondog Mat Manatee, and uh, they played a legendary summer jam at Watkins Glen in uh, New York, which also featured Grateful Dead and the Allman Brothers. Wow. So that would have been quite the event. Go back in time and see that show. Yeah, I just need a you know, time travel and smartwatch at this point. <laughs> and uh, we do all every tour that ever was. And sure well, don't tell anybody, but I actually have a bunch of time machine. I just don't really tell too many people. But keep that a secret, okay? Another hit for the band in 1972 was "Don't Do It" from 
from their Rock of Ages album. And this is the live version featured on The Last Walls. There we actually got there we go. It's quite the remix here for a minute. <laughs> Context for the last waltz, it was uh, held on Thanksgiving Day in 1976 at the Wonderland Ballroom in San Francisco, California. Yeah, which uh, launched uh, a lot of careers. Bill Graham and uh, the Winterland um, in San Francisco, and then, of course, Winterland East in New York. Um, yeah, launched a lot of careers, including Grateful Dead and, you know, Jefferson Airplane and uh, the um, San Francisco psychic, uh, psychedelic. 60s, you know, sort of band. And other you know, artists featured in the movie include Joni jo jo Mitchell, Dr. John, Dan Morrison, mm -hmm. Ronnie Wood, Bobby Charles, and Paul Butterfield. So, uh, that great, great list of people. Uh, it would be okay if we could divert from the, the band's ba uh, core music to another song in the concert, Manish Boy, the uh, Buddy Waters cover. Sure. Let's let's hear a little bit of uh, Bob do Bob Dylan doing a, a night like this with the band backing him up first, and then we'll find that one. Fantastic. What was the song? Spanish
buddy guy recently uh -huh. you know well, they, they probably two-thirds of the song has got that sort of general song yeah, layout kind of feel. Yeah. But it's all good that's the way blues is and uh, eric gates opened up for him uh, gales gales yeah uh yeah and uh he was a good dude yeah he was good too yeah oh so. yeah he did a great jimmy hendrix tribute i need to go uh, spend some time and post some openers. Uh, I just keep posting the main acts. But there's no time to go back and post the openers. That's right. Let alone all these small bands. Poor guy is getting lost in the shuffle. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's all too much, as the Beatles say. <laughs> well, it's been almost a month since Rob, we lost Robbie Robinson on uh, August uh, 9th of, of this year. Uh, he was age 80. Uh, he had a lot of had a little long illnesses, but Robert's pass, uh, passing, Garth Hudson is the last living original member of the group. Oh, okay. So we're down to one now. Yeah, okay. So then I was, I was wrong. So, yeah, we got to try to get Garth Hudson on the show. i got to reach out to him. <laughs> That'd be pretty epic if you could get Garth well, on the show. Well, Johnny has connections. Oh, so no, I don't have, we'll, I know he does. <laughs> we'll, we'll make him an offer he can't refuse. So. There you go. Um, I'm going to stay at the casino in Ocean Joda. Martin Scorsese, famous director, also made uh, like a bunch of great movies, like Casino. And oh, he's made so many great movies. It's <laughs> yeah, he, he's a legend, and, and mainly known for the, the gangster movies. That sure. He so to do a concert film, uh, yeah. you know, kind of a little bit out of character for him. Yeah, really, departure for him a little bit. It just it goes to show just how much he loved the music of Bob Dylan and how much he loved the music of the band. I think uh, Johnny's met Martin Scorsese because he consulted him for Casino because he was there. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So, Very cool. Um, we'll have to, like, next time he's all back on, we'll have to ask him his Martin Scorsese stories. Right, right. Uh, that's good. All these Martin Scorsese has great music in his the soundtracks in his films. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right there. Casino. So, if we survive show temper, there's Rocktober's around the corner. We're seeing ZZ Top. Muppet Ship Casino. We're going to see Pink. Pink. We're going to see the... But not Big Pink. <laughs> not the Big Pink. That's, right? that's some house. This, this small Pink. This normal... This oh, there was a band called the Big Pink. Oh, right, yeah, right. They took their name from yeah. the album by the band, right. although they had a completely different sound than sure, the band. Sure. <laughs> and then uh, the day after ZZ Top, called the Postal Service and Death Cab for Cutie. Oh, that's right. And October 8th, Peter Gabriel. Uh, October 14th. So Guns and Roses, 15th, Robert DeLong at Neptune, uh, the 17th is Pink, uh, October 28th, I'm seeing the, the guys from Workaholics, they're doing a, a podcast at McCall Hall, that's my sister's birthday, that's right, your, your birthday is in October too, yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, around Pink, yeah, the day before Pink, yeah, well you know, uh, Big Pink was, as you mentioned, the house, and the band uh, it took, took that name for music, from Big Pink, which was their their debut studio album, but it did not feature uh, on the cover. Instead, it featured a, a painting of uh, uh, different people playing guitars and an elephant and stuff. So the uh, the cover uh, for music from Big Pink didn't really reflect the title music from Big Pink. But <laughs> when they released an album called Jericho later, the Cover, they really could have swapped them because Jericho does feature a painting of Big Pink. And they had a hit from it called Remedy. So here's a little bit of uh, Remedy from Jericho after the band reunited in the early 80s. Okay. <laughs> Except uh, my player here is stuck, so <laughs> give me one second and we'll, we'll get that going. That's why I work in AV. That's, that's my gig is to get the audio and video working.
by the end. From their eighth studio album, Jericho, and coming 17 years after their quote unquote farewell concert released in 1993. And in 1994, the band performed at Woodstock 94. So, uh, and then uh, the band was also put into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, that year. And then in uh, 1996, uh, they released two more bands after Jericho. Uh, High on the Hog in 96 and Jubilation in 98. And it features some uh, guest appearances of Eric Clapton and John Hayden. And then uh, Helm was uh, diagnosed with throat cancer in 1998 and was unable to sing for several years, but eventually regained the use of his voice. And then and in 2002, Robinson brought all the former members uh, together in So the, the band in 2008 received a Grammy Award, um, but there's no reunion of the former members. But in honor of the event, Helm uh, held a midnight ramble in Woodstock, and he continued to perform and release several albums. But on uh, April 17, 2012, it was announced on the website he was on the final stages of, uh, of life, and he yeah. passed away two days later. So. We're in, the, we're in the future now. Right. I was just looking up uh, some information um, because uh, when they um, were doing some different iterations of the band, they included some pretty famous people um, in the band, such as Jack Cassidy and Jorma Kalkinen, who were you know, famous for being in like Hot Tuna and Jefferson Airplane and stuff. And then Billy Preston, of course, the, the sometimes fifth Beatle, from the rooftop concert and, and uh, the last album, uh, were uh, was also a member of the band at some point. So some interesting um, celebrities uh, in the band at different points. And uh, how much time do we have, Eric? Are we, uh, I feel like we're running out. Yeah, we got about five minutes. Well, uh, some other uh, achievements by them. Uh, they were in 2014 inducted into Canada's Walk of Fame. Uh, Rolling Stone ranks them 50th of, of the list of 100 greatest artists of all time. And we already mentioned the weight, the 41st song, the greatest 500 songs of all time. Yeah. That's and 2008, the group received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. And they were also inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame and the Rock and Roll Music Hall of Fame. So they, uh, they have quite the, uh, the lives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, those guys, yeah. Trying to find, uh, oh, another song on the list here that I had seen um, was When I Paint My Masterpiece, um, a great band slash Bob Dylan tune um, that uh, the Grateful Dead uh, once again um, covered a lot during concerts uh, near the end of their uh, run before Jerry died. Um, well, speaking of Bob Dylan, you know, the, the Bob Dylan with the band put out a live record called Before the Flood uh, that was a, a double album in 1974 and featured many songs by Bob Dylan but also uh, some of the hits by the band including Up on Cripple Creek mm -hmm. and the night they, they drove old Dixie Down, Stage Fright and more. I thought it'd be fun to take a little bit of a listen to Don't Think Twice, It Gives All Right. Yeah. Uh, recorded at the LA Forum in Eaglewood, California back in 1974. One of Bob Dylan's all-time classics here. Yeah.
seldom went platinum, which is a rare thing for a, a live record. But, uh, you know, when it's Bob Dylan teaming up with the band, you got that super group kind of dynamic. It's not that big of a surprise. Philosophy and life to live. Well, guys, we are running out of time. Anything else you want to plug before we wrap up the show for today? I'd like to go out. Uh, the ending song would be like, "I Shall Be Released," the uh, Bob Dylan uh, last waltz song. Uh, it's, a it's a really good version. Yeah. Thanks again for coming on the show, Darren. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Uh, as always, guys, it was fun. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope everyone's going to have a great show, Timber. <laughs> as, as, as we are already having. Yeah. And, uh, and tune in next week. Yeah, Viva EMT, Rock, Pop, and Soul. Oh, we got, I forgot to mention the Facebook group. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, Viva EMT, Rock, Pop, and Soul on uh, yeah. Facebook. Come and join the group. Enjoy the conversation. Yeah, yeah. We need more members to spark lively conversations. And uh, check out Devin Chrysler Studios. That's where you'll find my 5,500 videos of local bands. And my <laughs> recently resurrected channel of At Do Train. Uh, your album's coming out this month? Fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs> well, well, stay tuned on that. Yeah, battersetheband.bandcamp.com. Keep us uh, posted. To check out the debut album from us. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, keep on rocking, everyone. Uh, we are going out with the band from the last waltz. I shall be released. Have a good one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right, and then down to the fair we go.